most memorable and significant day of my life was Friday the 13th in May 2011. It's a hot, sunny day in Memphis, Tennessee, and I've just pulled out my favorite purple dress because today is the day that I graduate with my doctorate in business information systems and become Dr. Lakeisha Simmons. And I hear a knock at the door and I race to the door and I open it and there stands my mother. And I'm so excited to see her because she's here today even though she wasn't most of my life. And she says, Kiki, are you ready? Today's your big day. And I'm nervous and I'm excited all at the same time because today I'm gonna to graduate and do something that I never could have imagined doing, becoming a doctor. I grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana, and my mother had me at the young age of 17 years old. And my father was 18. And you can imagine how rocky that would be for teen parents. And so my father graduated high school. My mother wasn't able to because she was caring for me. And to make a better life for us, he decided to go off into the Marines because that's what a man would do for his family. So he left while he was doing something great for my mom. She felt alone and abandoned and it, things got really rocky for her. And it got so rocky for her that she had to pass me off onto some other family members. And that's when my story gets really dark. So as a little girl, who's done nothing wrong, my mother left me and so did my father. They emotionally abandoned me and physically abandoned me. And it's hard for me to talk about and I never talk about it. And there's something about being passed around from family member to family member and couch to bed in different guest rooms that just makes you feel alone and depressed and orphaned. Because what did I do as a little girl that my parents didn't want me? And so my family, they took me in, they took care of me, but some of them were cold. One in particular was very cold to me, but they always took care of me. I had everything that I needed. I had all my necessities. I had food, I had shelter, I had clothing, but emotionally I was alone. By that time I had a little sister, but she was with her father in a different state. So I didn't have her and I was just alone. that's hard for me to face, but that's, that's the reality. So there was family drama that I had to deal with. So not only were my parents gone, but I had family drama to deal with. But the one thing that I had, and I don't even know where I got it from, but I had faith. And when I learned about the Lord's Prayer in the Bible, I memorized it. So I was, I was in middle school, eighth grade, around this time, and I memorized that Lord's Prayer. And every night I would recite it, and I would cry into my pillow. And my prayer after I recited the, the prayer was that one day I would be happy. I prayed that one day I would be able to take care of myself and I would be happy. That's all I asked for, not for money, not for things, but to be happy. And my school life, unfortunately, wasn't any better. As you can tell, I'm thin, and that runs in my family. So I was teased a lot. I was teased so much that I would wear two pairs of pants so that I would look bigger than what I was. And I'm sure the, we would say, who would do that? <laughs> who would do that? I had no hope. I had nothing to look forward to. I had nothing to aspire to be. And so school for me wasn't 
it was it was just useless. Why? Why participate? Why care? Why go? So I skipped school a lot. So give you a little background of the area that I lived in. To this day, it still is a very low income area, about 32% poverty rate, lower income, about 28,000 a year annual income for families in that area. And there wasn't a lot of people going to college. It wasn't something I had heard of. It was, I mean, I've heard of college, but it wasn't something that I connected that they would be me going to college. That wasn't my line of sight. That wasn't something that um, I could envision myself doing. So in high school, I was truant. I wasn't at all interested in any of my studies. And one day, I was walking down, well, I was so truant, actually, that I had to write a letter to be promoted to a, to a sophomore. I had missed that many days. And thankfully, I was crafty, and I wrote a very compelling letter. <laughs> and I was promoted. And I'm so glad that I was, because that sophomore year, I was walking down the hall, and I will never forget it. I was walking down the hall, and I saw a flyer up on the wall in the hall, because I was skipping class, of course, should have been in class, and I wasn't, so I was just roaming the halls, and I saw this flyer, and it said, historically black college tour. And I said to myself, historically black college tour, that's a mouthful, what is that? And so I took down the number, and I thought about it the entire day, and when I got home, I couldn't wait to call and I feel something in me, why am I so excited about this? I, I couldn't really put it together, I couldn't really understand why. I found out that the college tour was a couple hundred dollars. And I worked at McDonald's at the time, but I didn't have that, that, that kind of money. So I was able to borrow from family and friends. I even borrowed from my boyfriend's parents at the time because for some reason I really needed to go on this college tour. When I got on that bus and I stepped up on that bus, I remember it so vividly. I stepped up and I walked in that aisle and I looked back and I saw this ray of sun because it was a very early morning and the air was crisp and that ray of sun was so bright and it was almost as if it was a sign. There was a sign for me that I was doing the right thing and I was where I was supposed to be. And that long bus ride down to Nashville, I, was, I had so much anticipation built up. I was nervous, but I was excited and I knew something was about to happen. I just didn't know what it was. And I thought to myself, what is happening here? I'm excited for once in my life. I'm not crying, I'm not depressed. I don't feel lonely. I just, I'm excited about something, something very unseen. We get to Nashville. We get off on the campus of Tennessee State University. And the moment I stepped on that campus, on that October day, it was as if my whole world had just opened up. I had been exposed to something I had never felt, never seen. And it was amazing. So we had a college tour guide, a student ambassador, and she was bubbly and joyous and she was so excited and we were following behind her and she was telling us the stories, yep, that's Rudolph Hall, that's named after Wilma Rudolph. And all of our technology was provided by Oprah and she went here, you know, and I don't know if any of that was true, but she was really selling it, right? She was, and I was like, wow, wow. I was so excited, and I'll never forget. She had this bright blue, this TSU blue. You've seen it, right? That TSU blue, you can't mistake it, with these big white letters, TSU across the front. And she had so much just joy. You can see it on her face, just the power in her voice of how excited she was to be there and to be explaining these things to us as the future. And I remember seeing 
other students walking around campus and they had on their backpacks and they walked with purpose and they stood up tall and they, they were on a mission. They had somewhere to be and they looked like leaders to me. And I had never seen so many black young people that were leaders. I thought, wow, because I've always been in the majority. My high school was 90% black. So it wasn't that I was not used to seeing black people, but they looked different. They had a different aura around them. The whole environment was just powerful. It was dignified. It was special. And I thought, I have to come here. I have to be here. This is where I'm supposed to be. And she showed us the dorm rooms and we went to the cafeteria. We ate soul food delicacies. I said, wow, they serve greens and catfish here? Oh my gosh. And I said to, the, to the, our guide, I said, so wait, let me get this straight before we leave. I get three meals a day. I get a dorm room, I have my own space, and I can study whatever I like and make my life my way. And she said, yes, that's what college is all about. She said, you'll make new friends. It'll be great, you should come here. I went back to school laser focused. I didn't miss another day of school because I knew if I got my butt to TSU, I was gonna make my life my way. There was nothing that was gonna hold me back any longer. And so I did. I graduated from high school, pulled those grades up. I got admitted to Tennessee State and I graduated from Tennessee State University and I went on to get my master's. I worked for Caterpillar Financial here in Nashville in the technology department, and I went back to school and got my PhD. And, and, thank you. <laughs> and I never even planned to go to college. I just never even, no one in my family had went away to college like that. That just wasn't a thing. And here I was, the unlikely achiever. And so fast forward a few years and had everything I wanted. I have everything that I could have ever imagined having, having right? I could take care of my two sweet boys been able to travel the world. I'm fulfilled. I have friends who are here to support me. I have family who love me. My relationship with my mother and father are repaired. I forgave them. I put that all behind me. And now, what could possibly be wrong? I have everything, but something inside of me was still missing something was wrong because when i would go home from work i felt like something was still missing there was something that i hadn't finished and i didn't know what it was so i started volunteering with a lot of the organizations geared towards women and young people and one day in 2016 i was sitting in my backyard reading it was a spring day and I was reading the news and I came across an article that said that teen girls, adolescent and teen girls were missing school because they didn't have period protection products. And I thought, oh yeah, I've heard of that. I know that happens in other countries. I read on further and that was happening right here in the United States. And I thought, surely not. Surely not in the United States. Girls are not lacking pads and tampons to go to school. And so I called up some of my friends who are teachers and counselors in Metro Public Schools, and I said, have you heard of this? And they said, yes, this is a real thing. And I, and I immediately was taken back, and I, was, I withdrew. And I couldn't understand because the first thing that came to my mind was being a young girl and being hopeless and feeling that I had nothing. But I had necessities. These girls don't even have necessities. 
Could you imagine not having pads and tampons to go to work? Not having pads and tampons to go to school or participate in a sport? You have to sit that week out? That's happening right here in Nashville. One of my friends told me a story of a girl who was bringing socks to use so that she could come to school, socks. And another girl who was using toilet paper and had soiled her clothes so bad through the toilet paper that she called an Uber to send the young lady home from school. This is in Nashville. This is Metro Nashville Public Schools. And I couldn't handle it. I broke down. And I, it, it was just a dark cloud over me for some time. And I said, why aren't we talking about this? And I have to do something about it. I have to. I can't wait on someone else. And so I started a nonprofit called the Achiever Academy. And through this nonprofit, I would facilitate workshops and do things with college age women and early professional women. And we'd have networking events. And every single one of the events, the admission fee would be five packages of pads and tampons. <laughs> I wanted them all to be free. And my friends will tell you, Keisha, charge these people. You're feeding them, you're spending all your money, charge them. And I said, nope, we're going to charge pads and tampons. That's the admission fee. They know, they've been, that they bring them every time, pads and tampons. And I didn't know what I was gonna do with them. But on March 8th, International Women's Day of 2018, I decided to donate all the products I had collected to a local high school. Thank you. Thank you. And at that time, I donated a little over 200 packages of pads and tampons. So that took care of about half the girls in that high school. And that was not good enough for me. I was, I just couldn't believe it because when I did the numbers, that was not going to last very long. So I continued collecting their mission fees. And in August, I heard from the Tennessee and they wanted to know more about this. We talked more about it. There was an article that came out and there were so many members in the community, probably many of you, and they heard about this issue, and I decided that now that we have everybody's attention, because they put me on the front cover, which they didn't tell me they was going to do, they put me on the front cover, and now that we had everyone's attention and I was bombarded with emails, I said, yep, you can donate, you sure can, and what I want you to do is host a drive at your workplace, host a drive at your organization, host a drive at your church, okay? That was important for me, that everyone hosts their own drive. And so in September of 2018, I challenged everybody in Nashville I mean, I begged and I pleaded, everyone I came in contact with. And by the end of September of 2018, the city of Nashville and even an organization outside of Tennessee, we had collected and counted over 200,000 period products. 200,000. for those girls in Metro Nashville Public Schools because I remember being a girl and it still hurts me to this day to just know how I felt as a young girl, so alone and orphaned and that nobody cared. And I cannot sit back and let these girls think that nobody cares, that they're not going to school because they don't have pads and tampons and nobody cares. I can't, I can't, no way. So you know what your homework is. <laughs> and so that is my hope for these girls, is that they will be inspired to continue to go to school because education changed my life. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be a professor helping to educate future girls to be doctors, lawyers, chemists, scientists, if it weren't for that college tour and for that exposure. And so I want these girls to be like the young Lakeisha and to be inspired and motivated 
be self-motivated because one day they'll get their happiness. One day they'll be that unlikely achiever who will go on to inspire future generations. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Now over on my website, there are plenty of free resources, which I'm sure you're already aware, budgets, investing guides, videos, but you can use this discount code off of anything on my website for a limited time. So be sure to go there now at LakeishaSimmons.com and use this discount code. <music>